talk about people we can help and how we can do this. So marketing creates culture. Marketers can make change happen. Probably one of the most exciting things that I think Seth Godin talks about on a regular, consistent basis. It's something that motivates me and drives me. I really believe that that's probably one of the most intricate parts of our company. So I I love to keep that in mind as we go through this whole amazing podcast. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about Seth Godin's, his newest book, right? His newest book. This is marketing where he's talking all about what marketing looks like today and what that landscape looks like in, in our world. In our world, exactly. And I really believe this book, he, he's got so many books, definitely uh, in many people's minds, the guru yep. of marketing. And what I loved about this book the most is that he ties most of his books together in this book, and it's all based upon uh, a whole bunch of case studies yeah. of projects that he's uh, been working on. So it, it just really comes all together yeah. uh, in a complete book, in my opinion. So he starts off with really talking about, and as he does in many of his podcasts from his books, he really talks about how the standard marketing uh, strategy that we've known for the last hundred years just doesn't work today. You know, you go out and you buy a massive amount of ads. And with that kind of capability of uh, being able to buy massive ads, you're going to sell a lot of products just by merely uh, running the ads. And it also made you famous. What he's saying is it just doesn't work Not anymore. Uh, anymore. Right. Um, and so what he's saying and what this book's really about is creating ideas that spread. How to get the word out. How you, will you be discovered? And um, uh, how many uh, marketers hustle with all the wrong intentions. Right. Which gives marketers us a bad name. Yeah, definitely. He really gets into how, um, and this is, it goes back to uh, how marketers can change and make change and why they're so important, especially whether they're positive or negative, because we want to make sure that we support and pursue the organizations that have people that want to make positive change. Right. So what he says is marketers solve problems spread ideas, positively community change. Most marketers, marketers, once again, give us a bad name by hustling for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Selfish reasons versus generosity. Yep. And so what we are and what he really talks about is the companies on the penguin, of, of a penguin. Company on the positive side of marketing. He calls them a penguin. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yep. That's exactly what he calls them. Right. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean uh, at this moment massive success, but at least it means that you want to go tell authentic stories. Mm-hmm. You're not out there trying to um, trick people, fake people out, and create uh, wealth uh, by just driving bad intentional um, ads that don't give value to the client. Right. And then what he really gets into is one of the things that discounts or, or discount are because your product is not remarkable. And he really gets into, and we're not going to get, it, it, there's many areas in this yeah. that we talk about discounting. But he just really, uh, right up front, and he, he sets the tone that he's going to, you know, really get into uh, pricing, discounts, Groupons, all of those areas are not necessarily what really the client or customer wants right. like we think we just think we lower the price and they'll buy it right um, uh, and so this is some of the things that i loved that he says your lack of confidence or insecurity is not an excuse to hustle me it's true insisting on a long viable path instead of the short-term success that um uh is is sustainable i know i wrote in my notes is not not. um uh, pretty funny but that's what makes it sustainable right that's what a long-term plan really uh is all about is sustainability right and i just like his definition of marketing you know he says marketing is the act of making change happen and the analogy he uses um you know because it's all about it's all about serving people right you want your if you're going to build a company you're going to build a brand the whole idea should be to solve a problem to serve people that's what we want true marketing to do we want marketing to be that avenue where people who have a problem 
we market to them how we can solve the problem and make their life better. And he uses the analogy of uh, the lock and the key. He says most or a lot of people, a lot of companies run around looking to find the lock that fits a key that they have. So they make the key and then they run around trying to find a lock that it will fit in. But what we need to be doing is starting with the lock. So we need to find that lock that already exists. And then we come up with a key that the solves solution. that problem, the solution that opens that a- lock. Absolutely. Um, uh, and I did, I did love that uh, yeah. section. One of the things I just want to mention for our audiences, especially if anybody that does not know um, who Seth Godin is, uh, he's definitely uh, probably one of our biggest uh, mentors that we follow. Definitely. In results media, for yeah. sure. We love the guy. And Got love his picture on our website. So I just want to kind of talk about and give the audience a little bit of heads up if they don't know. So in 1983, Spinnaker Software Company uh, hired Seth Godin. And he had an immense amount of uh, budget to go out and sell uh, ads and really make a name for himself. And sure. He said that he did that and he went out and spent all of the money and they actually did have um, a product sell. But it just was truly amazing for me is that he just comes out candidly saying, you know, right up front, man, I got a great job and I really blew it. Yeah. He's saying straight out that right. they didn't buy any of the products from his marketing. Right. Uh, that he went out and just had fun spending all these ads yeah. and getting all these people excited, but it right. didn't really have necessarily a, a result oriented plan. Right. So the next area that I have in my notes is Jay Levinson, Gorilla Marketing. And so there's three people that Seth really uh, pushed onto in the book, and one of them was Jay Levinson, mm-hmm. and he's known for Gorilla Marketing. Right. And so uh, me being such a fan of Seth Godin, so I'm like, well, if I'm going to follow Seth Godin, I better follow better and, check this guy and out. find out who he's following, uh, is yeah. who made him who he is. Right. So I really studied Jay Levinson, and there was a story in there that was um, quite funny for me, and it's one of his real go-tos right up on the top of his list. And, you know, he's really about just really reaching out to customers all the time from birthdays and everything. But there's one story that he tells, and it was told to me uh, quite a few years ago when I was with Marine Max, a uh, yacht dealership in uh, Seabrook, Texas. It's right there near uh, NASA, maybe two, three blocks right down the road okay. uh, from uh, NASA. You know, the everybody, you know, there's a problem in Houston. <laughs> and so, um, uh, yeah, it, it's a, a great uh, company. And the district manager in this area is teaching me some lessons. And one of the lessons he teaches me is he goes, Rex, I come from the car industry in Georgia. Back in Georgia in the summer, we had a, a trick that we used that was just truly incredible. Rex, I think we need to do that here. That's what you're missing here. And what we did in Georgia is that Whenever someone bought a car during the summer, no matter what, we gave them a gallon of ice cream. We even if they didn't take the car home that day, they took their gallon yeah. of free ice cream home from yeah. buying the car. It was a it was a common deal. Now, you know, for most people, it's just great, pretty nice, right? You know, cool dealership, cool program. Yeah. It's a lot more about understanding marketing because how many people are going to stop by the, any other car dealership with a right. gallon of ice cream right. in their automobile? <laughs> and so he you know, tells me this story and uh, just a funny guy. And the very next statement, almost always out of his uh, mouth, is that, and I will take anything in on trade outside of anything that's alive because I have in Georgia. <laughs> Taking a horse in on trade and oh it died on me. Gosh. So no more. It can't be alive. But outside of that, Yikes. just a, a, a funny guy. Um, yeah. uh, and when I was reading uh, Jay Levinson, I couldn't help but think. Yeah. Marketing uh, outside the box. Marketing outside of the box. Uh, absolutely. And just staying with your clients. That's what Jay Levinson's really about is um, uh, in, in a, the reason that Seth is probably way into it. Because when you really get into what uh, Jay is suggesting is commitment, true follow-up. Yeah. You're not trying to just keep them from talking to anybody else. Right. What you're really trying to do is build that 
uh, honorable relationship yep. and keep it going. Yeah. And that really builds a story that you can talk about later. Right. Uh, many times. And they'll love why you did it. Yeah. It's just a funny yeah. um, and it'll, uh, story. It'll make you stick in their mind. If you actually care about them, you take care of them. You know, it just reminds me of the thank you economy that Gary Vee talks about. He's got a book on that. All just about serving the customer. Always serving the potential about, client. Um, uh, specifically serving the customer. Right. The next one is... Lester Wonderman, which really brings up a great story from uh, our conversation last night. <laughs> so what he's known of is the father of direct marketing. Okay. And I think we've talked a little bit about direct marketing. And if not, let's just make that clear. Direct marketing is the true call to action today. It's the way that you get leads today. It's how you drive your business today. And branding is your long-term way of, of telling your story. And so Lester Wonderman is a uh, master of direct marketing, which if you listen to almost everything, it has a very relevant place in today's marketing, but it truly has no sustainability if it's left without a branding and a right. long-term right. plan. But some of the things um, uh, that Lester is known for, huge, Netflix, amazing one. And some of the programs we were talking about last night is – uh, the Dollar Shave Club and Harry's. Yeah. And what he did, I think, to truly make that amazing is where he was outside the box, where he wasn't doing what everybody else, is that he set them up on a marketing campaign that was membership-based. Right. And I really believe, and when you look at so much in marketing, it's about differentiating yourself from your competitor. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, and this was before I'd really studied it, last night is what I was saying, for me... What was important is that I did not have to go to the department store. I didn't have to Definitely. go find it. Right. They took care of all of my shaving yep. needs. Comes to you. I didn't, and it's exclusive. I deal with uh, uh, Harry's, and that's it. That's and it. they send me my stuff to my mailbox. It comes yeah. in a box that's just beautiful. Yep. The presentation's great. Uh, and um, so I think it was a really great uh, program. And I will admit, as I was saying last night, I think they're in trouble right? because they've left what made them successful and they've left the membership category. I don't know exactly what, or they've at least gone beyond that now. And they're just, they're in that. stores just like everybody else, which just is like everybody it will else. affect their membership. Um, you so have to imagine that it's going to affect them. You, you do. And another big one that people, and I want people to understand how marketing, what he's really suggesting. Amazon is one of the masters at direct marketing. Mm hmm. They do have some branding. We all know their sure. logo, their names, but they are absolutely should be considered the master today at direct marketing. Yeah. And that's why everybody wants their stuff on uh, Amazon. Prime. Yep. Right. Then another one that he is a big uh, mentor for uh, Seth is, is Bernadette Dewall. In what she's famous for is storytelling. Right. She's been a mentor to Seth. To Seth. Yeah. Yes. So looking into her and just following her, she she's raised billions uh, for companies through charities and through other ways, through profits. Um, and basically what I get from her is that ideas that spread win. Uh, and, and she's got some amazing uh, advice and some uh, true insight into storytelling. Awesome. So yeah, definitely go check out those three guys. They've really helped shape Seth Godin. So if you want any more information on them, just look them up. And and if not, it, because I know a lot of you guys may be just listening to it, driving. The last thing we want you to do is to pull over right now. <laughs> hit us up. Just hit our contact. Send us an email. Put in a quick note that you want uh, anything, specific charts, yeah. anything. You want some information on, uh, hey, you mentioned some people in that. Just jot it down even if you don't know the specifics, and we'll do our best to research and get back to you and get yep. you that information. And you can email info at resultsmedia.io. Yep, exactly. So um, a personal and relevant message that customers want to hear Um uh, Really selling it to their worldview. The new um, way of marketing. The, is truly the new way of marketing. Um, one of the things that I really got out of the, the book, uh, persistence, mm -hmm. consistent, and frequent. Frequent is the, is something that people more often than not really miss yeah. in the formula. Content, but content, content. Content, content, content. And so persistent, 
consistent and frequent stories delivered to an aligned audience right. will earn attention, trust, and action. Right. And that should be, those three pillars should be exactly what you're trying to get. Yep. If you want success, if you align yourself to earn the attention, trust, and action of any market, right. you will win. Yeah, that's how it works. You got to be out there. You got to gain the attention. And then you have to be trustworthy. If they don't trust you, you're not going to get them to take that action. Absolutely. Trust is really what, it, if you really want to get to the heart of sales, that's what a salesman's selling is trust. Right. Uh, or even the business, wh- whichever level you want to look at sure. it. Uh, without trust, they don't make an action. Uh, right. And so you have to earn their attention. This is what I love about this exactly, because we're trying to earn from features and benefits, and we've had lots of these discussions, and I've used feature benefits all of my life and I really see the paradigm changing dramatically where sure. now today they're not as interested in the feature benefits. What they're interested in is uh, the ability to listen to somebody about that after they've earned their trust. Sure. So now you got to get their attention somehow. Yeah. Then you build their trust with your authentic story and then you'll get an action. Yep. Yeah, and I like that he's talking about uh, delivered to an aligned audience. So that's now you have no reason not to market to people that you know are going to be interested in your product. And that's what he's talking about when he's talking about that aligned audience. You're not just throwing it in front of everybody and hoping some of it sticks like you used to, but you're actually sending it to the people you know are going to be interested. And, uh, you know, he said market driven, not marketing driven. Yes. So you're marketing to the market that you know is already going to be interested in that product. It's, um, uh and we're going to get a lot more into that too. Perfect. But, uh, you're absolutely right. And, and really when you're talking about an aligned audience with today's digital capabilities, you know, targeting yeah, um, and all of that. Now that's only viable if you actually slow down and truly become in tune yes. with your audience's worldview right. to right. really create that alignment. Yep. And so you had just mentioned something uh, about uh, marketing. And, and direct marketing is not the same as brand marketing. We've talked a lot uh, about it in the past. Right. We've talked a little bit about it tonight. And we'll continue talking about it for years to come. Yep. So both are based upon the decision to um, uh, make the right thing for the right people. One is for long-term, one's short-term. So let's talk a little bit about why we do what we do. Because... Okay. I think it's relevant when we talk about marketers have the resources to make change happen. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about why. Why results media. Yeah, and results media. But you too specifically. Yeah. You got such an amazing eye for emotional triggers. That's what I love. Yeah, and I don't think that's something that I even intentionally started doing on purpose. You know, it just started telling people stories which naturally gets the emotion. And that's what marketing is, is telling that authentic story that gets the emotional trigger that then causes that person to build that trust and take that action, right? Um, And so since I've been doing it for so long, making videos and creative content and seeing how it affects people, now we're able to take that into the marketing world and actually do some good with it and tell real people's real stories and actually help make change is uh incredible to get to watch your talent in that sense and i love working with it because thank um, you uh, we're able to do it in an authentic way we're really able to use um uh our whole team's talent right to truly make impact and and make change and that's really our why and that's why i thought it was relevant to go ahead and throw us in here in this conversation yeah i think so too because it is just really um uh the core of who we are yeah and you know one of uh seth quotes that really stood out to me was that marketing now relies on empathy and service and i feel like that's just where we are at at the core it's like we're empathetic we put ourselves in other people's shoes and we want to serve so that's all marketing is and that's all branding and direct market it's all it all involves that uh, we all think it's rocket science it's definitely not a black and white formula sure as a math formula works but at the same time it is just truly choosing the right path yep uh and sometimes when we choose the right path it's not always the perfect or right path sure so we make adjustments to get to the right path right. but if our intentions 
yeah. are in place to do the right thing will find the right path. Yeah. Um, I really believe that. And, and one of the things, change, change is best made with intent. And and that's really, you got to have the intent. Yeah. That's where it starts with. Because yeah. you can make some uh, mistakes going the wrong direction. But if your intent was to go the right direction, you're going to find the you're right gonna direction. You're going to get back. Yeah. If you're you get off get course, you'll get back on track. It. As we all know, we learn more from our failures <laughs> than we do uh, our successes. Yes. So the next story that um, I remember him having is talking about when he flew over to India to sell uh, glasses. So he's going over with a vision company. He's working for yes. a company yeah. uh, selling eyeglasses. So he goes over to India and they have all these people lined up, you know, because he's in an area where they don't have eyeglasses. Right. And guess what? They have a gigantic need for eyeglasses. Right. So he talks about the huge line of uh, the people from the culture and, and everybody lining up. And he explains kind of the price. And we won't get into all the details, but they could afford it. Yeah, a few bucks. In, in, in a few bucks. Right. And most importantly, they need them. They needed it. And so they have like four different uh, test options and they're running the people through, you know, not quite like the uh, American mall, but right. 20, but they've got four and they're making it, you know, as appealing as they can. And, and people are loving it and they're trying yeah. them on. And uh, at the end of a few long sessions, you know, Seth's just like, but they're not buying them. Right. I mean, some people are, it's like one out of four or something. And, you see and they're only going to be there that day. And they're only, yeah. And, and then they're and, gone and, forever. And, and the scarcity <laughs> yeah. is, I forgot the main portion yeah. of the story thank you because scarcity is a huge uh point right they're gone tomorrow yeah so today you can buy glasses you can see you can see today or you, you lose the opportunity <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow right and and they weren't buying right and this is something that i just love about how you got to keep an open mind and try some new things so what they did is um they took away all the options and they took away all the test glass mm -hmm. and um uh when you put on whatever you put on one um, pair that one pair right. that's um if you like it you, you pay them mm -hmm. and you walk away with them on you there yeah. is no choices there is no options right um this is what it is and all of a sudden they started selling right uh large amounts of glasses yeah uh, pretty crazy uh, um yeah uh so so i i just you, you know i loved it in and in today's mall you know they have 20 pairs you can try on right you know some of that goes back to worldview like he was talking about here in America, we want 50 options and we want it. We have the time. We've got the money, the resource to go in to try them all on and then pick what we want. We're not really because we have the options to see. We can go buy them. Yeah. Uh, at, at, you know, a few dollars ourselves. Right. In a country, you, you know, where a few dollars is truly a lot more than right. in India. And uh, we go for fashion. And that's what I think truly amazed him at, yeah. at that moment is here we are so selfish as a country we will go and we're just worried about fashion not seeing mm -hmm. we're buying eyeglasses right but i can almost promise you nine out of ten times that someone's standing you know picking out eyeglass they're not worried about seeing they already have right. assumed that <laughs> they they're, they're going to be see. able to see <laughs> yeah. much better with the eyeglasses right it's about fashion yeah um, and it's a culture difference yep what about the drill bit story for me, this oh, is, a, is a huge one. So good. Um, uh, and I don't know if I can tell it as well as he, but I would love for you to try maybe. I mean, and, and sure. I'll tell you my take. Yeah. So he's talking about marketing for a quarter inch drill bit. And so rather than just figuring out what's going to make somebody want a quarter inch drill bit, they take it all, all the steps farther to see what actually is going to be that emotion, emotional or motivational driver that gets somebody to buy it. So it's, well, I don't need a quarter inch drill bit. I need a quarter inch hole drilled. Well, actually, I don't need a quarter inch hole drilled. I need a bookshelf on my wall. Well, actually, I don't just need a bookshelf on my wall. I want to store this on my shelf and I want it to, what's that going to say about when my friends come over and they see what I, my status symbols of books or whatever it is on my in, shelf. In one of the areas that I got from it and I love it. And that's exactly uh, what, what is they looking for? It's not a drill bit. It had nothing right. to do with a uh, drill bit. Right. And the other take that I'd gotten from it is um, uh, it might be just a guy trying to make his wife feel good. <laughs> That's what it was. Yes. Um, and, uh, you, you, you know, yeah. when you really get to the end of it, it's just like, oh, my gosh, this. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the self-satisfaction of I put that shelf up. Right. I made my house look better. My wife is happy with this. Yeah. 
it just, exactly. And that's what he was looking for. Right. Uh, not a quarter inch drill bit. Not a quarter inch drill bit. So then knowing that when you go down that whole path, now you're able to market more effectively for what the end consumer actually wants. Absolutely. And, and it just, he, he does such a great job telling the story. So then you can have that uh, perspective of yeah. what he's trying to say. Yep. Um, um, and so uh, with that, we buy from our feelings, not really from the actual product. Yeah. We tell stories that resonate. Mm-hmm. Are true and hold over time we make connections and create experiences that's what we do yeah so the other area you know right before we get into some areas that you've talked about and really opened up and and that is the uh the market driven so he talks about who's driving the bus and it really goes back to you, you know the market driven um area because what he's saying before he really gets into studying the market uh driven is that a lot of them are chef driven or money driven like banks absolutely are driven off of money right the bay area is driven off of a tech market yeah so what he's really saying and there's many other drivers but if you're a marketing driven company as we've talked about the standard marketing if that's all you're relying on you don't have remarkable yet you know you're relying on buying mass ads mm-hmm. and expecting it to work right that's a market driven uh bus yeah dead end and so if we're talking about a market driven not marketing driven a market driven what that means is to hear the market yes to listen to them and more importantly to influence it to bend it to make it better yes you think about the hopes and the dreams of your customers and their friends and listen to their frustrations and invest yeah. in changing their right. culture. Yep. That's sustainable. Yes. That's where sustainability comes from. Yeah. Who do you want to change? What niche? Who is it for? A- absolutely. You, you know, really um, looking at your market. And um, uh, in some of the areas that I just love in this is their hopes and their dreams. We're really not trying to sell them. They need... Um, food and so we're going to come up with a way to deliver them food kind of use the membership maybe we're going to deliver food whatever Mm -hmm. but what we're trying to do is listen to their wants and needs right specific to that market find a lock find make a key yes absolutely and and really the lock would be uh the market so grab your market Study them, listen to them. Yeah. Influence them by going and finding the key for them. Right. Yes. Solve the problem. Solve the problem. Um, and, uh, you know, he really talks about uh, changing culture. And that doesn't happen right away. That's always the challenge in marketing for us as marketers. A lot of people want us to come in and change their business in six months. And d- some environments with direct marketing, that's not uh, impossible. Right. Sometimes it's easier than uh, we lead people to believe. Sure. Now, with that said, that is not a sustainable, long-term, viable plan. Now, if you do some of those tactics or strategies within a long form or a uh, you know a true branding, um, uh, long-term uh, marketing, that's a different story. Um, and so that's where we get into short-term thinking. You can have some positive short-term think. You should have, I should say, mm-hmm. short-term thinking, even with a long-term authentic message right. with all of that. You still you need have direct both. marketing. You still yeah. want to drive the dopamine hits. Absolutely. Um, no different. And so some of the things that I got from the book is, you know, what are we uh, trying to change? Yes. Um, small or profound. Right. One of the examples he uses is uh, politics, which is great to really get the audience to understand how much we as marketers can change. And so uh, one of the things that could be is to turn non-voters into voters. Yeah. Um, uh, So he's got three quick uh, stumbles he goes through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Do not seek the impossible. Be very specific on your change. Which goes back to like Harris and in this all. Uh, I I think that they had a very specific 
plant very good. Right, Harry. Uh, yeah, Harry's. Harry's the uh, the razors and the Dollar uh, Shave Club, mm-hmm. and I think that they were amazing ideas and just way ahead of their times. I question them because they've both went into uh, retail retail markets, but nonetheless. Uh, they were very specific on their uh, what they changed different from the rest of the market at that right. moment. Um, uh, defend what you're doing. Uh, what do you promise? So much of this is, you, you know, in marketing, we make a promise. Mm-hmm. Can we follow through right. with the promises? Right. Is a huge one. Some of the examples he used, I love. Now, uh, I am a, an SEC football Fan. okay so when you say roll tide it means a lot to me <laughs> yeah uh, and i'm an lsu fan and if anybody ever studies football uh, lsu was really an amazing football team especially with um uh, staben as the coach and so he's gone to alabama and he's made roll tide really have the name that it has today and what he's really saying or what roll tide means and if you've ever been down south you can hear it from miles away you can hear the ground rumbling roll tide miles away literally from the football state mm-hmm. what it means is they're that powerful they're that much they're that influential you cannot beat us and if you do you've earned everything uh that you, you could have imagined yeah. because we're not gonna let anybody win right and they're truly that strong and dominant uh, of a team They've got the follow through. They have the absolute follow through. Tide promises to clean stains. Um, you know, I guess that's uh, <laughs> controversial to a certain degree, but obviously they've done something very well. I see more Tide yeah. in homes than any other sure. uh, laundry for obvious reasons. Um, niche your audience uh, audiences uh, to change, change the culture, um, uh, in in work. Uh, towards um, long term and that's kind of what he's talking about you know that cultural change Mm -hmm. change the niche and for me he used a couple of them uh, that really helped me understand you know the the difference in the worldview how you would actually send those messages how do you find that yeah and he used two extremes that I think we all can identify very well with Starbucks and uh, Dunkin Donut right so you look at the two very successful Organizations, right? Very different. Very different worldview of clients. Mm-hmm. So, how many construction workers, right off work and construction trucks, do you see out in front of Starbucks? Yeah, none. How many do you see out in front of uh, Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah, all of them. All. Of them. <laughs> yeah, it's a very um, uh, specific worldview, and, right? And I loved how he used those. Are great ones to really make the point. Yeah, same product essentially. S- same pr- yes yeah because different uh, worldview uh, different worldview and different passions from the owner that created that worldview yeah. that was able to identify um uh with a specific worldview yeah uh you look at starbucks the guy was obsessed with coffee and so his passion was all about uh the process of the coffee beans mm-hmm. of how we're going to present this um cup of coffee yeah from the cup and if you really get it i mean it's very very important because what is starbucks starbucks is for the individual that can afford it and when he walks away he feels very good not because he got or she got coffee in the cup right but what the cup represents afford yeah the ability to go to starbucks spend the three to five dollars yeah for that at cup. least yeah and the, and the packaging is great right um, dip and dunk don't it that's not the case yeah they're going for a very uh cost effective uh coffee yeah and a couple very cost effective donuts yep two different plans very very successful but definitely uh two different worldviews yeah so one of the areas that seth really hones in on in this book and in other books but is the uh, who is it for yeah you know who should you choose as your market and yeah really you know we've talked a lot about worldview and we've talked a lot about analyzing it but one of the things that he really pushes on and you and i even have to discuss for ourselves is diving deeper and deeper down into a smallest viable market right 
And what he's really saying, and, and he gets into it here in the book for a little bit, talking about the worldview, the personas of your audience. Yeah. And w- where he really um, got me is, is even if you just have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, that could be a whole sustainable business. True fans. True fans right. that are, are authentic to you. Yeah. Because you've been authentic to right. them. Yep. They uh, follow you. They, they trust you. They buy the things you put out, you know. They believe that you're going to actually help them with their dreams. Because you have. Because yeah. you have. That yeah. You're listening. You you right. actually care. What he's saying is, is really get into um, the difference between, in marketing, we've always gone to demographics. Age, you know, the real basic mass that we all still use and talk about. But what he's really saying is, is if that's what you rely on, you're going to miss it completely because yeah. that's not the worldview. Right. You can have all of these numbers and age groups right. and, and it, that doesn't at all tag in to the worldview. And is what he's saying is, is the psychographics or, you know, the behavior patterns yeah. of these people. You know, the person that makes $400,000 a year and drives a Porsche Cayenne and plays golf uh, on Sunday with his buddies might not have the same uh, lifestyle as the construction worker sure. um, that is going out bass fishing uh, on the weekend. Right. Two different yeah. viewpoints, two different ways in their Definitely. lens, the way they see the world is completely different. Right. And so w- what we're really talking about, a worldview, I guess a good way to, to start is a definition of what we're really suggesting as worldview, right? Yeah. So the lens we see the world through, Mm -hmm. our assumptions, our biases, and yes, stereotypes about the world around us. Sure. Um, And so focusing on the smallest viable market is really one of the first key areas that I see in a uh, truly successful marketing campaign.